The Rebel 500 is a highlight on the Southern racing calendar, and it all happens right here at Darlington International Raceway in Darlington, South Carolina. Well, David Pearson is the boy to beat today. He's the fastest qualifier and starts on the pole. But there's a whole red-hot herd of chargers right behind him. And believe me, they all have great respect for this tricky old granddaddy of the super speedways. Let's get them underway. This is the one they all want to win. For some reason, a trophy from Darlington is the most highly treasured possession. Not only is it the oldest super speedway, but most drivers consider it to be the toughest, most demanding track on the NASCAR circuit. It's 1.366 miles long. The winner will circle it 367 times and take home the lion's share of a $95,100 purse. With near perfect weather, a crowd of over 48,000 race fans jammed the stands for this 17th annual running of the Rebel 500. They were attracted by some of the greatest drivers and fastest machinery in stock car racing. David Pearson in the Purolator Mercury, number 21, came up with the quickest qualifying time of 153.463 miles per hour and starts on the pole. Cale Yarbrough in the Chevy 11 starts on his side. Bobby Allison and Bobby Isaac are right behind them in the second row. Buddy Baker and Benny Parsons occupy the third row. And then it's Cecil Gordon and Richard Petty. With the pace car off the track, all cars wind up out of the fourth turn, and the moment of truth is here as the green flag snaps down and they're off. David Pearson explodes out of a threesome down the main straight to take the lead as all cars pour into turn two. Bobby Allison in the Chevy 12 passes Cale Yarbrough to take over the second spot. At the end of the first lap, it's Pearson with the lead, Allison a close second, Yarbrough running third, and Bobby Isaac in the number 15 Ford holding down on the fourth spot. Allison is right on top of Pearson through every turn as he challenges David for the top spot. At Darlington, the action comes early and in bunches. This one in the second turn involved five cars, Arrington, Ponch, Marcus, Pond, and Dalton. Richie Ponch in number 90 will be the first car behind the wall. With the yellow out, the pits in the garage area are loaded with broken machinery. Here, driver Lenny Pond jumps out of the car and does a little body shop work of his own. Dave Marcus's Dodge is towed behind the wall. Suddenly, it's racing time with Pearson and Allison bringing them down for the restart. turn, Allison drops low, puts a wheel under David and powers his way through to take the lead. Now, Pearson is two with Isaac Green. Bobby's Coke machine is handling very well through the turns, and he seems to be stretching Pearson.
Buddy Baker driving the K&K &K Dodge 71 makes an unscheduled pit stop. His crew discover a broken control arm and push the car into the garage area to replace it. They can fix it, but it'll cost Buddy several precious laps. Bobby Allison has the nose of his Chevy pointed right toward Victory Lane. It looks like he's going to run away and hide. was Cale Yarborough in the car care Chevy. He's had handling problems for the last few laps. Finally, he lost it, hit the wall, and spun all over the third turn. The yellow is out again, and Cale is the first one to flap down pit row. As soon as he comes to a stop, Junior Johnson and the crew swarm all over the car. Now Pearson pours in. The Wood Brothers do their usual spectacular job, and David gets less than a 20-second rest. Bud Moore and the crew give Bobby Isaacs Ford new right-side rubber and fuel. Meanwhile, Kale's car is re-glued. They put on new tires, uncrunched the sheet metal, refueled it, and pushed him out on the track. All cars are out and ready now as Bobby Allison brings them under the third green flag of the day, and they're off. Pearson is second now with Bobby Isaacs right on top of him and looking for daylight. There's a blow-up on the front chute. Joe Frazan in number 18 blew the Hemi out of his Dodge down the front chute. And at the same time, 89, Johnny Barnes lost it and spun in turn one. With traffic just barely able to get around him, Joe is about the only one that takes to the pits. For him, it'll be a permanent stop. The flagman is getting as much of a workout as the drivers today as he drops another green and they're off again. This time David Pearson has the lead with Petty second and Bobby Isaac third. shoot. Bobby Isaac tries Petty on the high side and passes him. He's two now, going for Pearson and the big one. Oh no, another one. just blew it down the back chute. Then, as he entered turn three, lost it and spun in his own oil. They're popping engines today like balloons. Once again, the caution lamp is lit and the race is in the pits. Bobby climbs out of his car, realizing he's been forced into an early retirement. And it was running so good, too. It's those Japanese pistons. They just don't last. On the 98th lap, Cale Yarbrough has the lead and brings all cars down for another restart. David Pearson is second, Allison third. Bobby Allison is hot today. On the back shoot, he passes Pearson and closes up on Cale. fourth turn. Bobby unleashes the Chevy on the high side to take the lead away. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that this Alabama hustler came here to race. As 
as hard as Allison tries, he just can't shake David's big Mercury. Both cars hang in the turns well, and they're very evenly matched. On the 170th lap, Paul Tyler in the number 83 Mercury loses it, does a double spinner, stays out of trouble, and drops down onto the apron. He's all right, and the race continues. Pearson gives Allison no rest as he drives him hard and deep into every turn. There's a lot of Chevy fans here today that would like to see it end just like it is now, with Allison in front. Car 24, Cecil Gordon drops into the pits, tells his crew the air is showing through on the right side, and they give him fuel and new rubber. Then it's race leader Bobby Allison in. Watch this Junior Johnson crew. Boy, they know their job and do it well. Right behind him, Pearson swings in, and the nation's finest pit crew goes to work. On the drag out of pit row, Pearson wins it. Or maybe we should say the Wood Brothers won it. At any rate, David is leading Bobby now. Now the old pro in number 43, Richard Petty, picks up his pace and closes on the leaders. Richard is a very cool driver and doesn't believe in burning his car up during the early stages of a race. Like everybody else, Petty has to head for home, too. This time, they give him left side rubber and a full tank. Now, Pearson and Allison have moved up on some of the slower cars. The traffic is thick, but these boys cut it like a hot knife through butter. Into the third turn, Bobby's moving up. He cocks the nose of that Chevy to the low side and fires underneath Pearson to take the lead as they dive out of the fourth turn. Allison is pouring it on now. He's actually stretching David in every turn. He's going to run that Chevy right out from under the numbers. It's another blown engine on the front straight and a spin out in the first turn. Then James Hilton crashes into the wall out of the fourth turn and limps down the straightaway. This one draws yellow lights all the way around the racetrack. Hilton finally brings the car to a halt in the first turn. When they check it over, they find the right front spindle broken. His pit crew will have to remove the crunched fender, then replace the spindle and wheel. When they tow Hilton's car away, the wheel drops off, but it knows where it belongs and follows the car toward the garage area. Allison leads them around for the restart. There's the green, and they're away. But this time, Petty is second with Pearson third. David is cranking on Richard now, and there he goes. Pearson whips his Mercury past the STP Dodge to take over second. But he's going to have to fly to catch Bobby Allison.
Hey, look out. Seventy-seven, Charlie Roberts blows in the first turn, spins down onto the infield. Then, number 30, Walter Ballard loses it in the oil slick and spins out right behind him. With the yellow out, we're going to give you a close-up view of the finest pit action in racing. Watch it. out on the track ready for the restart Bobby Allison dives back into the pits complaining of a vibration in the front end when the crew check it they find stripped lug nuts on the right front wheel this necessitates a change of the entire wheel assembly and it'll cost Bobby one full lap With Allison one lap down, number 11, Cale Yarbrough, in a battered and beat-up Chevrolet, leads the pack down for the restart. Cale has handling, engine, and transmission problems, to mention just a few. Pearson passes him easily on the back chute to regain his lead. Coming up in a blind blur of speed is Bobby Allison. He's one lap down and determined to make it up. He begins the charge on Davy. These are the duels that make Darlington famous. tangles with another car entering turn three. His sparring partner is G.C. Spencer, driving the Dodge 49. This brings out caution flag number 10. Spencer and Yarborough both dock their cars behind the wall, filled with the souvenirs of Darlington. Pace car and David Pearson lead him around for yet another green flag. Right after the start, there's mayhem in turn one. A seven car pileup that rattled the press box, turned the first corner into a junkyard. Petty was involved, 72, Penny Parsons, 25, Roy Main, 67, Buddy Arrington. Ninety-eight, Dick Brooks is helped out of his car and into a waiting ambulance. The garage area is now loaded with wrecked machinery, as Darlington claims its usual toll. Bobby Allison, who earlier looked destined for victory lane, is back in the pits. With the hood up, he climbs out, his face clearly reflecting the despair of defeat. Forty cars started this race. Twelve now come down for the last green flag of the day. David Pearson is the leader. Benny Parsons, in a badly crippled Chevrolet number 72, vainly tries to hang on to the second place spot.
The white flag snaps down on the Pure Leader Mercury, number 21. David Pearson need only circle his oval one more time. Down the long back shoot into turn three. Out of the fourth turn, onto the front chute. And there it is, the checkered flag. David Pearson is the winner of the 17th annual Rebel 500. Benny Parsons hung on long enough to finish second. Bobby Allison was declared third place finisher. And Richard Childress took the fourth place money. From the first green flag to the checkered took four hours, five minutes, 14 seconds. A very cool, calm, but tired David Pearson climbs out of his car. $15,835 richer. To finish Darlington is in itself a triumph. Thus the winner's trophy becomes a magnificent possession.